Well, we've selected 80, around 80 characters to feature, and there are so many amazing female characters in the history of Doctor Who, and we felt like with a female Doctor, it was the right time to celebrate them and look back and also kind of look forward as well to the new series and the new Doctor as well. Russell T Davis is quoted in uh, a biography of Verity Lambert, the very first producer of Doctor Who, who we feature in the book. Um, and in this biography, Russell says that what's amazing about her as a producer is that what you get in the very first episodes of Doctor Who is, um, is it's got four leads, two men and two women which mm -hmm. even now would be unusual, but that have that parity. Um, so he sees uh, the, the women being at the forefront of Doctor Who right from the very beginning. Um, so we, should, we really shouldn't be surprised um, mm -hmm. about this sort of thing uh, coming up now. I think, I think it's been a thread through the series since it began back in the 60s. Yeah, I would agree. Well, they've all got quite varied and interesting stories. And I think the interesting thing for me writing the book was writing heroes but also villains. We've covered people like Cassandra and Missy who don't necessarily do good things but they've got a lot of qualities that make them interesting and their qualities help them you know be villains and, and obviously they're driving those qualities into the wrong things but you know for instance Cassandra I think she's quite uh, she spots opportunities quite well, like, and she's quite, uh, she bounces back from, from things quite qu quickly. She's also very driven and determined and nothing's gonna stop her. Um, I think equally Missy as well is quite cunning and she's quite clever and it's that, you know, being able to spot an opportunity and, and go for it and run with it. And they're, I think they're also quite, every villain thinks that they're doing the right thing. And I think that even though they do bad things and you might hate them for doing that, in their minds they're doing what's right. And I think quite often, you know, at the end of the day, Cassandra doesn't want to die and fears death. And writing that character actually made me see her in a different light and actually felt sorry for her in a way. So yeah, it's quite varied, I think, in what we cover. So we cover all the companions um, from the beginning of the series in the 60s up to the present day. Uh, and then having made a list of those companions, we, we added other characters, other women of note uh, from the history of the series, um, trying to keep it a relatively even spread over the decades that Doctor has run. Um, and some of those characters are, are characters who appear in more than one episode, some of them appear just once, some of them appear in just a couple of scenes. Mm -hmm. um, but we had a lot of discussions, uh, Crystal and I, and also our editor, Steve Cole, um, about who those people should be and what what we could say about them and um, and you know it's no by no means a comprehensive list there are lots of uh, characters that we we left out there are some some of them that I fought quite hard for mm -hmm. um, to the point of Crystal and Steve pulling their hair out going <laughs> shut up um, but but I, it gives a good spread I think uh, I and, think so uh, and some of them are, some of them are characters I've never really sort of considered before but as a result of doing the book. Um, I've kind of visited again and, and it changes the way I see the stories they're in and stuff so yeah. hopefully it's a bit something new even if you know your Doctor Who tediously well like I do. So all of the artists are female artists apart from Lee Binding who did the cover and um, I think it was certainly for me when we submitted a list both of us submitted uh, some artists that we liked um, but obviously it was in the hands of BBC Books to select those and do the comm commissioning process but for me I really wanted to give uh, opportunities to um, fans and people who hadn't necessarily worked professionally before so I put quite a lot of people like that forward. Uh, I. Um submitted some names, people I knew, people I'd worked with before. Um, uh, a woman I met on the school run, taking my um, <laughs> son to school, uh, and uh, various other people. And yes, but the, the final decision was, was uh, made by our, our masters at BBC Books. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it's a, great, it's a great spread, there's lots of different styles, lots yeah. of different types of characters. Uh, Crystal and I 
stayed up one night on the phone until about midnight, mm -hmm. working out briefs for all of the characters, um, which was great fun, uh, but was lots of us just lateral thinking and how can we illustrate yeah. this person and how can we... We wanted to make it interesting because obviously you can you can draw pictures of the characters, but we wanted to we wanted it to reflect the stories. You know, for instance, Bill is shown with a shadow behind her of a Cyberman because obviously spoilers, but at the end of series ten, she unfortunately turns into a Cyberman, and there's something what? quite what there's something quite eerie and and kind of sad about that image because you know when you know what happens, you feel really sad and yeah. sorry for her. So we wanted to kind of just make it. a Slightly more interesting, I think. Yeah, the illustration yeah. of Liz Shaw, who's a character from the 1970s, is her in a mashup or with a story from the 1960s that she's not in, but because of a reference to that in a 2010 episode of the Sarah Jane Adventures, I was quite pleased with that. Yeah. Thing, tediously. Yeah, no, me too. I have many favourites, but I I love Ace. I mean, I, the reason why I love Ace is because I feel like she's the most the character that's most like me. I feel like she's quite slightly tomboyish, and she's also quite physical. Does a lot of beating up, beating up of Daleks and things like that, and she's quite she chats back a little bit and. Um, and I like her fashion sense as well, I think. Uh, I um, have to be careful about this because I know quite a lot of the <laughs> people who play companions. Um, some of them are my friends. Uh, I also think there are, there are characters that I really like. Um, there's a character in uh, the 2011 episode, the, Apostle, the Impossible Astronaut, called Joy, who's in one scene. Oh, yeah. And she, she comes out of her toilet, is surprised by a monster and killed by the, by the silence. But she's brilliant in in those in those minutes. You get a whole sense of who she is and what her character mm -hmm. is. She's just a, and she's just such a great character and so beautifully played. Um, I'm also very fond of uh, Tegan's auntie Vanessa from Logopolis, um, who who gives Tegan a lift and is then killed by the master. Again, she's in one episode, um, and a lot of those those sorts of characters I really like just because a it's a great bit of writing and it's also a great performance. Mm -hmm. It's an actor who's come in and gone. I'm going to make this something. Um, and that's as well as the sort of big name characters and stuff. Oh, I mean Ace. Um, <laughs> let's choose someone who's not Ace because Ace is my go-to because I love her so much. Well, it's got to be one that doesn't have a has a, have a kind of unfortunate ending. Yeah. Like Donna, poor Donna. Who would I be? Who, apart from... Hmm. I think Martha is quite an underrated companion. And I by think... Who? By, by who? fans. Fools. 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 Um, and I think what's great about her is at the end of her series, she actually makes a choice. She says, do you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore because you're not seeing me in the way that I want to see you and doesn't feel valued by the Doctor and she's one of the only companions, certainly in the modern series, that gets away with her life. She actually comes away from travelling with the Doctor and is still alive and she's grown on the journey that she, you know, in, during the time that she's been with the Doctor she has learnt a lot because she then does some work with Tortured and joins UNIT and does all of that stuff. But she makes that decision and she gets out, you know, she, she makes a stand and I really appreciate her for that. So I would, if I was to travel with the Doctor, I'd like to be able to make that choice before anything bad happens to me, I think. That's a good answer. Mm. That's a good answer. Um, ooh, uh, Bill Potts, for mm -hmm. all she gets turned into Cyberman, gets to um, end up with loads of powers and can travel around the universe as she wants to uh, and with has her space girlfriend space girlfriend yeah that, that doesn't sound so bad to me I'm um, up for that <laughs> uh, Amelia Rumford from the Stones of Blood is just a, an amazing character she's a very funny very nutty archaeologist 
um, I bet it would be fun being home mm-hmm. um, and having sandwiches and inviting women you've only just met back to your house. <laughs> yeah. I can see a theme yeah, developing yeah, here. Yeah. Um, it'd be fun to be with a song. Yeah. She has a fun time. Yeah. She has a great time. Yeah, I until think things go wrong. Sad, though, I think what happens really. to her is very sad. And also, yeah, the whole the, the relationship with the doctor is quite unfortunate. Yeah. Chancellor Flavia from the five doctors. Yes. Swish around and be acting president. Yeah. And just, I'd love that. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I think. I, I could do that. I think. Headdress. Yeah. I'd love that. Memorable, that's a tricky one. Memorable for me as a fan, simply because it upset me so much, was Donna, I think. Um, That made me cry so much because she grew so much and learnt so much and it was all taken away. And that will always stay with me. I feel like I, I felt at the time like I, I was really mourning a character, like I would a person, somebody I knew. So I think for me that was the most impactful. Hmm. I think um, Sarah Kingdom, companion of the first Doctor, who's aged to death in a a very memorable scene at the end of an epic 12-part Dalek story, um, has quite a a memorable ending. Um, I actually am going to go for the departure of Susan, the Doctor's granddaughter. Mm -hmm. I think think that that last episode of the Dalek Invasion of Earth is extremely moving, it's beautifully written, probably by story editor David Whittaker um, uh, and it's beautiful and it, and it sets up the idea uh, of the partings being sad that, that, that you mourning the loss of these people rather than it being easy um, and I think I think that that scene those scenes are are beautiful and actually the the effect uh, that the, the first doctor refers to the loss of Susan quite a lot afterwards uh, and it echoes right through to the present day mm-hmm. um, and I think I think that's a real um, testimony to a great bit of writing in in the early 60s. Best companions. I like a TARDIS team. I think having multiple people in the TARDIS uh, makes it more dynamic. And I've really enjoyed it when there's been multiple pe- people in TARDIS. Amy and Rory, the current TARDIS team. I loved it when um, everything came to a head in Russell's era and in Stolen Earth Journey's End, you had the TARDIS packed full of everyone who had been in his era. Even the spin-offs, Torchwood and Sarah Jane. So I feel like for me, that makes, you know, makes for fun, enjoyable viewing. Mm-hmm. I really like the current team in the TARDIS. Mm-hmm. I really like Yaz and Graham and Ryan. I think that's just a great dynamic. Um, I am interested in them as much about their adventures. Um, and I'm very excited to see where they go next. Mm-hmm.